my name is Chris Harris and I'm from allerytutors.com and welcome to this video on carboxylic acids. So in this video we're going to look through naming of carboxylic acids, uh, their solubility with water and interactions with each other and we're also going to look at uh, reactions of carboxylic acids with metals, bases and carbonates as well. So I suppose the best place to start is finding out what a carboxylic acid is. Uh, its functional group is drawn on the right hand side there, the top right. So it's basically a carbon with a double bond oxygen and an OH group attached to it. So this is really important because whenever you see this in a molecule, you've got to think about reactions to do with carboxylic acids. Okay, so nomenclature is really important as well because you have to be able to name these compounds. So uh, we've got to start with the easy one here first. And you can see we have two carbons, so that makes it an ETH. So that's going to be ethanoic acid. Nice and easy, always ends in oic acid. Um, and wherever you see one of these, uh, you've got to have that at the end of it. Okay, so the next one is a little bit more tricky. You can see we've got the prop group here because we've got three carbons. And then we've got a methyl group hanging off the second carbon. So we name it just like a normal alkane, really. So this is going to be 2 methyl because we've got a methyl group hanging on there. And that's going to be propanoic acid. Again, look, we've ended it with oic acid as well. So except we've got a methyl group attached there. Now sometimes we can have two carboxylic acid groups attached to it. So you can see this one here. Um, and again, if we have two of the same carboxylic, uh, same functional group, uh, then we prefix it with di. And if we have three, it will be tri. So this one slightly different in terms of its nomenclature, uh, because we have to include the e in between um, the uh, at the end of the carbon chain and the end part of the carboxylic acid. So this one, in this case, is going to be two carbons. So this is going to be ethane. Put the E in, and then it's dioic acid. So you see, we still end it in oic acid, but we've got the di bit in there to say that we have two of these functional groups that are at the end. And because we've got two carbons, that's going to be ethane dioic acid. So watch out for that one with the E in the middle. Okay, so um, the next bit is solubility. Now, for anything to dissolve, it needs to hydrogen bond with water if it's going to dissolve in water. So um, because carboxylic acids have an oxygen in there and hydrogen, it can hydrogen bond with other molecules. So we say that uh, carboxylic acids, short chain carboxylic acids, are actually soluble. The longer the hydrocarbon chain is, though, attached to it, the less soluble it becomes. And that's because the hydrocarbon chain uh, doesn't hydrogen bond with the water. So if most of your molecule is made up of an insoluble hydrocarbon chain, your carboxylic acid will really struggle to dissolve. So um, drawing a diagram to illustrate how this works is pretty straightforward. So here's our oxygen. We're going to put a delta negative on there, delta positive on the hydrogen, delta negative on that oxygen there, delta positive on there. This is going to be delta positive. Delta negative on the oxygen, delta positive on that. So we're just trying to put as many of these things on as we can. And uh, to show this hydrogen bond, uh, we basically just need to show a dotted line between the delta positive on the water, which is the hydrogen, and the delta negative oxygen on the carboxylic acid, uh, and vice versa. So again, with this one, we're going to show um, the hydrogen bond between the hydrogen and the lone pair. Now, be careful if they ask you to draw all lone pairs, you must draw all lone pairs. That's why I've put it on this water molecule here. And you can see the hydrogen bond is always between the delta positive on one molecule to the lone pair of electrons on the other. So make sure you're drawing your hydrogen bond doing that. If you put it anywhere else, you won't get the mark. So make sure you're actually really specific there. Um, it's easy marks to lose. Okay, so that's how it's dissolved. And the same principle actually goes with interactions with other molecules as well. Now, because carboxylic acids can hydrogen bond with each other, they have a relatively high melting and boiling point compared to other molecules with a similar MR. So for the same reasons as before, really, uh, you'll have a hydrogen bond. Again, we'll just very quickly just show you one of them. There's a delta positive. There's a delta negative. Uh, exactly the same as before. Uh, you have an interaction between, um, we'll put our lone pairs on there as well, just to be specific. There you go. There's two lone pairs on the oxygen, one, two. And the lone, the hydrogen bond is between the lone pair on the oxygen and the delta positive 
on the hydrogen. So there we go. Okay, and um, the reactions with them are pretty straightforward. Actually, you do need to know them, um, but they are standard equations. You just need to be able to name the compounds, I suppose. So um, here's one here. This is um, methanoic acid we're going to use, and we're going to react it with sodium. This is a reaction with acid and a metal, uh, and this will produce a salt and hydrogen. Now, this is just a basic generic equation from GCSE, really. Um, so there isn't really anything much difficult here. In the exam, they may give you a big molecule with loads of functional groups in, but as soon as you see a carboxylic acid, a metal will react with the carboxylic acid part of that molecule and will form a salt. In this case, this one here is uh, actually called sodium methanoate. Uh, that's the name of this salt here. So all you do is you say the metal that it's bonded to and then whatever, how many carbons you've got there, because this is methanoic acid, we call it sodium methanoate. If this was calcium, we would say something like calcium methanoate. Um, so it's really easy to name, so make sure you know how to do it. Uh, reactions with bases. Um, again, acid plus base gives salt plus water. GCSE stuff. So nothing extra here, but watch out. They might give you big molecules with uh, other functional groups in there. But if you see a carboxylic acid in there and it's reacting with a base, this is what will happen to the carboxylic acid part of the molecule. So acid plus base gives salt plus water. Again, there's methanoic acid plus sodium hydroxide is a common base. And um, will form sodium methanoate and water as well. Okay, and the last bit are reactions with carbonates. Uh, again, a standard uh, generic equation. Acid plus carbonates or metal carbonates will form salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. So very similar to the base one. Uh, except you do form carbon dioxide now. Uh, so a classic sign of a carbonate uh, is actually you would see effervescence. So one of the tests for carbonate in chemistry is if you add an acid to it, uh, you should get bubbles given off and that's a test for a carbonate. So they might kind of phrase it in that way as well. Um, but you can see again, we formed the salt, sodium methanoate again, because we're using methanoic acid in this example. Uh, we're using sodium carbonate as our metal carbonate. Uh, and we always form carbon dioxide and water. So the only thing really you need to remember is the salt bit. Make sure you form your salt properly. Uh, and make sure you can name it correctly as well. But um, as you can see, it's pretty standard at the bottom. Uh, make sure you can name your molecules. You can draw diagrams to show solubility and interactions with each other as well. It's really important. Lone pairs, partial charges, and make sure your hydrogen bond is going from the delta negative uh, of one molecule with a lone pair on it to the uh, delta positive of the other uh, and make sure you can know your reactions as well. But um, that's it. Bye bye.